because a little bit of variation is not critical to your listening. It's quite flat, by the way, but it's not the design goal as flat as possible. So if we get, can get an in-time response for the whole frequency range, that's very important to us. So what we did here, we have a problem with a passive filter. A passive filter yeah. is loaded by the driver. The driver is not a constant. The driver will change during dynamic movement, so that even the inductance you can measure. When the, uh, the woofer moves, it changes inductance. It's not symmetrical either. If it heats up, because you play loud, all the characteristics change a little bit, and the filter crossover will modulate with that. Also, the dampening factor, so the, the effect of stopping the generator, is very difficult with a passive filter because you have partly serial and partly parallel uh, parts. What we did to make it very simple, we used two times a 60B filter. One with capacitor, resistor, capacitor, resistor, or the other way around for the tweeter. So that way we got rid of the coils, of the inductors, and it's purely passive. We also made it 16 ohms. So we have a very beautiful 16 ohm impedance. Not, there's no phase change, so a very easy load for every amplifier. So your amplifier will perform better than with a regular speaker that has all these dips in its impedance. The other thing is because we have an amplifier in between the filter, a buffer amp, and the driver, that the filter is isolated from the driver. And that's the trick we are doing. Then we do a third trick, we have balanced filters. That's a novelty. And a balanced filter means you have more components, double the components as you normally use. Because of that, electromagnetic fields in your room will not couple with, will not have an effect on the speaker. But you would guess that these effects are very small. Yes, they are, but you hear them. It does have an effect on the sound. So we choose for a balanced format. So we have a balanced passive filter, then a buffer amplifier that isolates the filter from the driver, and it will perform much more constant during playing and also after playing loud or soft. So the nice thing is with this speaker at home, even at low levels, you get a very full response. While most passive loudspeakers, you have to crank up the volume a bit for them to get a good sound of it. Another thing that we modified, the driver, uh, you know what slipstick mechanically? I mean, well, okay, the slipstick, we measure that and we improve that. We improve it at least three times. That means that a minimum amount of energy will get the driver already moving much faster than it normally does. Why is it so important? Our brain in the first milliseconds will analyze what's happening and immediately will tell your brain if things are right or not. We call that zero crossing distortion. So if something is zero, nothing happens, there are no uh, air molecules uh, touching your uh, eardrums. The speaker is standing still. The first movement in that few milliseconds, your brain will start talking to you and tell a lot of things that are going right or wrong. Well, those are the things that we did. And you understand that perfectly, so. I was just interested in what happened when you pressed that button. Yeah, I, I didn't tell you. This unit works on battery. Yeah. And if you charge it, there is a ground yeah. connection to the AC. We switched to battery drive. We switched to battery, that's all. Yeah, that was nice. And, and then the ground connection the is gone. The interesting thing was that the phase for me in the, 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 in the mid-range area, I would say from around 800 to maybe two and a half something, yeah. that sounded by your button press. I mean, it made something like a big enhancement, like yeah. a, a big staging, but in the other way, it, it sounded diffuse as normally I would say there's something with the phase happening in that area. Yeah. Well, we have to, it doesn't, not by measurement, let's put mm -hmm. it that way. The reason is, it's a dirty reason, if you have, if you have crosstalk, if you have leakage, ground currents influencing your music, yeah, what will that it makes happen because it gives you a center. Such a good gear for <laughs> supplying the <laughs> currency and, yeah. and getting everything into the, the batteries and so. If you measure it, it's at a very, very low level. These ground currents, but they do influence the sound. You know, everything that's connected to the AC will also immediately create create a kind of ground loop. Even if things are really balanced, still we find that the ground resistance has of uh, 
has an enormous importance to the sound. Yeah. It shouldn't, yeah. theoretically. It means <laughs> that there are a lot of paths that we are not aware of. And it's usually capacitive, it can be the transformers, it can be all kinds of things in there. So basically, this is a standard preamplifier, you could say, running on batteries. It works with only tubes, very low noise tubes, also tubes that... Oh yeah, now the volume is down. You don't hear it. The reason is these tubes were made for car radios. In 1958 and in 1961 they stopped because already they had transistors doing the job. So they're temperature independent, they're resonance free and extreme low in noise level. You can make even an MC amplifier with these tubes, which is quite extraordinary for a tube. And it runs on batteries 12 to 18 hours. Just a brief interruption, esteemed viewers. As you may know, I'm Tom Martin, Chief Content Officer of The Absolute Sound. We have a new product. It's on the Substack platform, and we're going to do some interesting things with Substack, first of which is reader questions and answers. Each Monday, readers will submit questions. We'll pick the most interesting ones, and we'll answer the questions on Friday. We'll also have early access to articles and special blogs that don't appear anywhere else. We hope you'll join us. It's only a cost of a cup of coffee per month. Just check on the screen or in the show notes below. Thanks, and now back to the show. This is a voltage amp, so we split the power amp into a voltage part and a current part. And you will understand the benefits, because normally if you have an integrated amplifier or a power, uh, power amplifier has to amplify 30 times, you have different loads and phase uh, the phase at the output will change depending on the load of loudspeaker. Because you have a feedback loop, you get some decay or delay, actually, and it changes the sound. So if you want a feedback-free amplifier, it's not 100% possible, but reasonable. If you don't want voltage feed, have, don't have voltage feedback and low output impedance, your output doesn't react to the load of the loudspeaker. So that's what we did here. It has one-time gain, so you can connect the output to the input because one volt in is one volt out. It's no difference. So there will no, be no current flowing from one to the other. And even when I dis demonstrate it for our engineers, they're always surprised. No, don't do that. You will blow up the thing. No, it doesn't. Of course not, because it's at equal level. And this one has to do a very easy job. All it does is amplify. Because the load is a current buffer, it's behaving quite perfect. And a very simple way to build it. I think everybody should do that. Split the power amplifier in a voltage amp and a current amp. However, for a lot of dealers, it's still hard to understand. Say, yeah, but this is the power supply, they tell the customer. That's the amp and this is the power supply. Because they can't get their head around it that you have this, this split between voltage and current. You have to be a little bit technical to understand it, I guess. Uh, yeah, but most of them already understood the, the uh, difference between the, the working with a tube amplifier. Yeah. But they all know it's not about the watts, it's not a, it's yeah. about uh, uh, the thing between currency and voltage. Yeah. And and we need to get clear what, what drives the speaker. Yeah. And the other thing is, uh, if you have something here, as you have a controlled or an, 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 a by part activated speaker system yeah. in the base mid, uh, you do not have to deal with feedback and with all this uh, also, interference. Yeah. And you can really uh, uh, get also the, the uh, I would say, the, the active, uh, um, yeah. You can, you can bring it to lower uh, frequencies, even where the system normally mechanically would not work or True. would like to yeah. work. Yeah. You can control it and yeah. you never have any problems from the feedback uh, into your to amplifier. amplifier. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. But we didn't have that at all also as a standard a classical speaker with a passive mm -hmm. filter yeah. because of the buffer. It doesn't. It has very low output yeah. impedance. Where do you where do you cut uh, the, the mid range? Uh, uh, 1400, 1400 hertz. 1400. Yeah, 1440. Okay. It's quite low. Yeah, yeah, it's quite low. Yeah, it's a brilliant tweeter and it does yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. It's so also the must work uh, uh, downwards to there. Yeah, it yeah. must work. Yeah, yeah it's resonance yeah. 500 hertz. So. Okay, so maybe a uh, resonance frequency from the tweeter will be around. 700 hertz? Yeah, it's 500. 500. 500 yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah. And it has a little bit longer yeah. movement. So mechanically, well, you can. It's two times faster. It's two times faster, first order. Two so times it's a second order. So it's balanced. 
at yeah, yeah at the balance yeah, cross yeah and it's a low yeah. q yeah and the, and the q is of course because of that naturally it cannot be above mm -hmm. 0.5 so it's 0.48 that's why your impulse response is really good yeah yeah. And to really get the benefits, we, it should be a quiet room, which it is not, unfortunately, but uh, it amazes a lot of people. So, this is our new baby. It's called the Minissimo Forte. It's a passive active construction. So, you still need your power amplifier. It drives a passive filter, like in a regular speaker. The novelty is that it's a balanced filter, and it has a buffer amplifier built in separating the filter from the driver. Because of that, the driver will perform always with constant quality at low levels and at high levels.